Have you ever dreamed of scaling a mountain that has never been climbed in winter? Elizabeth Revel, a French climber, and her partner, Tomek Makovics, embarked on a daring expedition to conquer Nanga Parbat, the ninth highest mountain in the world. But their dream turned into a nightmare when they encountered severe weather conditions and Tomek's health began to deteriorate. What happened next is a remarkable story of resilience, courage, and friendship. Keep watching to learn more about the tragedy that unfolded on the Kinshover route and how Elizabeth's survival on Nanga Parbat inspires many. Let's get started. The daring duo of Tomek Makiewicz and Elizabeth Revel embarked on a mission to scale Nanga Parbat via the perilous Kinshofer route. Tomek Makiewicz was a Polish high-altitude climber, had a troubled past, but found solace in the mountains. Born in 1975 in Jelosin, a small town in central Poland, he moved with his family to Chesterhova when he was 12, where he battled drug addiction and depression for several years. Despite trying various jobs and hobbies, nothing gave him the satisfaction and purpose he craved until he discovered climbing. He joined a local club and began training on artificial walls. Tomek, as he was fondly called, soon realized that climbing was more than just a sport to him. It became his therapy, a way of life, and a challenge. He quit drugs and dedicated himself to climbing, traveling around Europe and Asia to find new peaks and routes. He met like-minded climbers who shared his passion and vision, earning him the nickname Shopkins or Chapa, which means hat in Polish due to his penchant for wearing one. Nanga Parban, an 8,000-meter peak in Pakistan that had never been climbed in winter, held a special fascination for Tomek, and he dreamt of being the first to achieve this feat. He made several attempts with different partners, but each time he faced failure or tragedy. Elizabeth Revel, a French alpinist with extensive experience climbing peaks in Europe, Asia, and South Africa, joined Tomek Makiewicz on an expedition to climb Nanga Parbat, the ninth highest mountain in the world. Elizabeth and Tomek shared a passion for climbing and had attempted to climb Nanga Parbat's Diamir face via a new route without oxygen or fixed ropes four times between 2012 and 2017, but without success. They met at Nanga Parbat's base camp in 2012 and became partners and friends. In January 2018, Elizabeth and Tomek returned to Pakistan for their ultimate challenge. They chose the Kinshofer route a steep and technically demanding climb that is known for its avalanche danger and bad weather conditions. This route has only been completed by a few climbers since its first ascent in 1962 and is rated as ED in difficulty. Elizabeth and Tomek took a minimalist approach, relying on their own strength, skill, and experience. They did not use oxygen cylinders or fixed ropes and carried only essential items for survival and speed. After the expedition, Elizabeth told the Alpinist magazine that our style was light without fixed ropes. At 4 a.m. on January 20th, they departed from base camp, ascending rapidly and carrying minimal gear, scaling over 1,000 meters of altitude daily. They established three camps en route. Camp 1 situated at 4,800 meters, Camp 2 at 6,100 meters, and Camp 3 at 7,200 meters. Despite encountering severe winds, bitter temperatures, and deep snow, they persevered through the challenges posed by the treacherous Killer Mountain. In the afternoon of January 24, they arrived at Camp 3 and took a brief rest before deciding to pursue the summit that evening. With only one backpack containing some food, water, and a down jacket each, they began their ascent from Camp 3 at 9 p.m., climbing all night with the assistance of their headlamps and relying on their intuition and instincts. Elizabeth and Tomek triumphantly reached the peak of Nanga Parbat on January 25th, a remarkable feat as they were only one of four teams to conquer the mountain in winter. However, their troubles began on their descent, when they encountered inclement weather conditions and Tomek's health began to deteriorate. Elizabeth became alarmed when Tomek responded to her inquiry about his well-being with the alarming statement, I can't see you. I can't see anything. 
Acute mountain sickness, which can be life-threatening, often manifests with blindness as a symptom. The only solution was to descend to a lower altitude where Tomek could receive more oxygen, since they were climbing without additional tanks. Tomek's pace slowed considerably as they began their descent from the summit. Determined to save him, Elizabeth supported Tomek by placing his arm over her shoulder, and they slowly descended together, with each step bringing them closer to a safer altitude. However, as they reached a height just below the death zone at 25,900 feet, Tomek's breathing became increasingly difficult, and he could barely move. Elizabeth's quick thinking and action were critical when she saw blood streaming from Tomek's mouth and observed frostbite on his nose, and she knew they needed to act fast to save his life. At approximately 11 p.m., she utilized her in-reach satellite device to text three individuals, her husband, Jean-Christophe Revel, and Ludovic Jambiasi, a friend overseeing the logistics of their expedition. In the message, she urgently requested helicopters for a rescue mission, as Tomek required immediate help due to frostbite and vision impairment. She implored them to contact Ali Saltoro, who was referred to as their agent with Alpine Adventure Guides Pakistan. However, finding helicopters for mountaineers in Pakistan was challenging, particularly as the only authorized company for such rescues was Ascari Aviation, which required a deposit. The duo had no prior arrangements with Ascari Aviation, so a GoFundMe page was established to cover the upfront cost. Eventually, the Polish and French embassies provided more than $80,000 to cover the deposit. Nonetheless, the climbers were still trapped at an altitude of around 7,200 meters, which was higher than Ascari's helicopter maximum landing height of 5,000 meters. Elizabeth made a tough call on January 27th and decided to leave Tomek in a cave while she descended to a lower altitude of 5,000 meters to meet the rescue team. She understood that the helicopter wouldn't be able to rescue them at such a high altitude. She left Tomek with almost all of their gear in a sleeping bag and started to descend the Kinshofer route, intending to meet the rescue team and then go back to rescue Tomek, who could not move on his own. Elizabeth had already experienced the loss of a partner before and had stopped climbing big mountains until 2013 when she made her first winter attempt at Nanga Parbat. After Ascari Aviation was resolved, the climbers had to be rescued. A dangerous high-altitude rescue mission required the best. The two climbers on Pakistan's killer mountain, Mount Nanga Parbat, were rescued by a team of Polish mountaineers climbing K2. It was a timed rescue mission. After hearing about their fellow climbers trapped on Nanga Parbat in terrible conditions, Polish climbers Denis Arubko and Adam Bielecki volunteered for a rescue mission. Bielecki was frightened when he learned Elizabeth and Tomek were in trouble, but he was impressed by Elizabeth's strength and toughness when they met during their separate winter mountain climbing expeditions. Another base camp K2 climber, Denis Arubko, felt compelled to help his friends with his high-altitude rescue experience. They were alone with a group of Pakistani climbers. The international mountain community rallied to rescue the stranded climbers. Arubko and his team were helicoptered below Camp 1 and began climbing the Kinshofer route to reach the stranded climbers. Elizabeth chose the same descent. Bielecki and Arubko, who led the climb, climbed quickly despite temperatures dropping to minus 60 degrees Celsius. Elizabeth chose the same descent. Bielecki and Arubko, who led the climb, climbed quickly, despite temperatures dropping to minus 60 degrees Celsius. Arubko screamed, and Bielecki shouted that he found her. Arubko brought Elizabeth to Bielecki minutes later. Bielecki almost cried when they found her. Given her ordeal, Elizabeth was in good shape. She hallucinated a woman bringing her hot tea and asking for her shoe after spending the night in a 6,100-meter crevice. Mountaineers often report psychotic episodes and hallucinations, according to doctors. Hearing voices or music and seeing movement are common hallucinations. Climbing alone worsens this. Rubko and Bieletsky rushed to help Elizabeth. They gave her warm mittens and circulation pills and brought her to a platform in Camp 2. They kept the tent cover from blowing to keep her comfortable. New challenge, getting Elizabeth down the mountain. They took turns, tandem repelling her down technical terrain and climbing down the snowy slopes with her. 
Elizabeth had to keep moving because the rescuers couldn't carry her. They left Tomek behind to save Elizabeth. Elizabeth was flown to a hospital after receiving basic care at the Nanga Parbat base camp. In May 2019, she climbed Everest in Lhotse. To honor her fallen comrade, Tomek Makovic, she wrote, To live, fighting for life on the killer mountain. Elizabeth's survival at Nanga Parbat inspires many. We grieve for Tomek Makovic's family and friends. Both high-altitude climbers showed courage, determination, and friendship. The story of Elizabeth Revel and Tomek Makovic's on Nanga Parbat is a powerful reminder of the risk and reward of mountaineering. Their determination to conquer the peak in winter with minimal gear and no fixed ropes or oxygen is a testament to their skill, strength, and passion for climbing. Their experience on the Ginzhofer route highlights the dangers posed by high-altitude climbing, including frostbite, blindness, and acute mountain sickness. The rescue mission that followed demonstrates the power of community and the courage of those who risk their lives to save others. Although the tragic loss of Tomek is a reminder of the risk associated with mountaineering, Elizabeth's survival and recovery serve as a source of inspiration and hope. Her resilience and determination to continue climbing after such a harrowing experience are a testament to the human spirit and indomitable nature. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more informative content.